Today I'm going to share with you our recent work about a bipartite scalable framework for online disease diagnosis. Here is the outline of this lecture. Now, let's begin with the background. In this section, I will introduce the online disease diagnosis problem and its common solutions. Thanks to the development of the mobile web, a growing number of adults are now attempting to gain a better understanding of their health conditions through online services before visiting a doctor. There are two common ways for individuals to access online health information. One is search engines. However, current search technology is often ineffective for self-diagnosis because most of the users lack adequate medical knowledge to formulate health queries with high quality. In recent years, many symptom checking tools have been developed as another alternative, such as the well-known symptom checkers from Mayo Clinic and WebMD. They simulate a doctor's diagnosis process by inquiring users with a series of questions about possible symptoms. The process can be summarized into three steps. First, the patient presents a self-report of initial symptoms. Then, the agent or doctor inquires the patient with a series of questions regarding additional symptoms. At last, a final diagnosis is made. Naturally, more information about possible symptoms could result in a more accurate diagnosis. For example, most existing questionnaire systems acquire a large number of symptom values from patients. However, it is inefficient and time-consuming. The actual goal of symptom checking is to minimize the number of inquiries while achieving a high diagnostic accuracy. From the machine learning perspective, Symptom checking can be viewed as a cost-sensitive sequential feature selection and classification task. Acquiring a symptom's value can be viewed as selecting a feature which comes with a cost. Reinforcement learning, or RL for short, has shown good performance in this type of tasks. However, RL frequently struggles in training with large feature spaces. When dealing with a large action space, because most actions are unrelated to the target, an agent may not obtain useful rewards for learning. Eddie, a framework for instance-based active feature acquisition, raises an alternative for symptom checking. It chooses the next feature by maximizing a defined information reward over all features. To deal with the situation in which an agent only knows partial information of patients during the inquiry process, Eddie uses a partial variational autoencoder, or VAE for short. However, its computational cost of estimating the reward using Monte Carlo sampling is too costly to handle a large number of symptoms. To address the aforementioned issues, we propose BISODA, a novel bipartite non-RA approach to a symptom inquiry and disease diagnosis. It is scalable to large feature spaces at a low computational cost, where RA methods typically struggle. And it demonstrates a high degree of generalizability across a variety of settings. We also propose a novel evaluation method and a new data set to assess the performance of symptom checking methods. In the following section, I will give a brief introduction to the methodology of our work. First, I'm going to present some necessary preliminaries about VAE and EDI. VAE defines a generative model of the form in which the data X is generated from latent variables Z, and PZ is a prior, for example, spherical Gaussian and p theta is presented as a neural network decoder with parameters theta to specify a simple likelihood, like Bernoulli. A VAE uses another neural network with parameters phi as an encoder to produce a variational approximation of the posterior, that is, q phi z given x. A VAE is trained by maximizing the evidence lower bound. An EDI is a VAE-based framework. It chooses the next symptom XS to acquire by maximizing over the approximated information reward. Using VAE encoding distributions P theta to sample the unknown symptom and the disease presence XS and XD, 
The two expectations can be approximated by a Monte Carlo process. This figure shows the BISODA process during a single round of inquiry and diagnosis. BISODA divides the task into two cooperative branches. The inquiry branch uses a VAE consisting of the encoder and decoder, while the diagnosis branch uses a supervised classification model to predict the disease. Specifically, the inquiry branch determines which symptom to collect next based on the reward function that was used in EDI. Instead of using the partial VAE, BISODA employs a product of expert encoder, or POE encoder for short, to better handle partial observations. Please refer the details to our paper. Then, as we mentioned before, Disease XD and symptom XS should be sampled given observed symptoms XO from the VAE encoding distributions to estimate the expectations in the reward. For a more precise estimation, we develop a two-step sampling strategy. That is, we first sample XS from the VAE, then sample XD from the diagnosis model which approximates the joint posterior by taking advantage of the predictive distributions from the diagnosis model. For the diagnosis branch, BISODA returns the predictions by a knowledge-guided self-attention model. Please refer the details of the model to our paper. And in particular, BISODA samples and observe the features XU from the generative model to model the uncertainty caused by partial observations. With imputed and observed features hat XU, we calculate the expectations and the variance of the predictive distributions and design a termination criteria. We saw that would stop inquiring to report the chosen disease if the probability of this disease is so high that inquiring more symptoms would not overturn the diagnosis. Generally, let's go over the workflow. At first, Observed features XO are fed into the inquiry branch. For every possible symptom S, the inquiry branch estimates the reward RS, which applies a two-step sampling strategy. And next, the inquiry branch decides to inquire the symptom T with the maximum reward and updates observed feature XO and observed features XU. After that, we impute XU by VAE and fed them into the diagnosis model to make predictions. Finally, the termination criterion determines whether to continue inquiring symptoms. The computational cost of ADI to estimate the reward is cubic because the total number of candidate symptoms NC can account for thousands of symptoms. It would be too expensive to support an online service. Hence, we designed two speed-up techniques for BISODA. First, we calculate symptoms that may co-occur with observed ones by prior knowledge. Then, we filter out irrelevant candidate symptoms during reward estimation to reduce NC. Second, in the Monte Carlo sampling process, we discard some samples and do not estimate their reward. Specifically, we only focus on positive samples of XS and samples of XD with high probability in predictive distributions. We will see their effects in the following experiment section. Unlike most previous baselines that have been proved to be effective exclusively on synthetic or real-world datasets, BISODA performs well on both types of evaluations. Besides, we propose a new evaluation to test the transferability of symptom tracking methods. Synthetic datasets were developed for model evaluation because obtaining a large amount of real-world medical data is difficult. We can see that the two trauma medical dialogue datasets only contains hundreds of cases and only four and five different diseases respectively. Generally, to generate a synthetic patient, we will first sample a disease uniformly and then perform a Bernoulli trial on each symptom based on associated probability in the database. However, there is a significant gap between existing synthetic and real-world datasets. 
Good performance on a synthetic data set is not a guarantee of transferability to the real world. Hence, we propose novel rare disease data sets to evaluate the model transferability using both types of tasks. Human Phenotype Ontology, or HPO for short, is a standardized vocabulary of phenotypes. We first use diseases and related symptoms along with their marginal probabilities to build large-scale synthetic datasets, like what is done in SimCat. Then we collect two small real-world real disease datasets, which are only for used for testing to assess the transferability from simulated environments to real-world data. Here are the main results. Refill and GAMP are state-of-the-art RL baselines. GAMP is only proven to be effective on small real-world datasets. As we mentioned before, RL methods often struggles in large feature spaces. And we can see that BISODA outperforms RL baselines with almost all evaluations. BISODA shows a great advantage, especially on our proposed large HPO synthetic datasets which is the first dataset to contain thousands of symptoms and disease. On our proposed HMS and MME datasets, BISODA also shows better transferability. For the synthetic SimCat dataset, BISODA performs better accuracy with more inquiry runs. However, in this figure we show that it is because refuel converges sooner and made an inferior prediction that it has less inquiry runs. Refuel stops the inquiry and performs a prediction when it believes that it has enough evidence, as its curve reaches a plateau. However, BISODA proves that this decision was not optimal. With a few additional inquiries, BISODA may provide a significantly better disease prediction, which is critical in the medical domain. We also conducted a case study from the real-world DXY dataset to investigate the actual inquired symptoms. The patient selected was a 21-month infant who initially reported coughing up flame and was easily misdiagnosed as having upper respiratory infection. The results are shown with positive inquired symptoms highlighted in bold, which are the symptoms that the patient actually suffered from and the key symptoms are moist reels and difficult breathing. We observe that refuel provided a hasty and incorrect diagnosis, while BISODA tended to make a differential diagnosis by first inquiring nose rubbing and allergic symptoms in order to exclude allergic rhinitis, and then inquiring about the key symptoms to provide a correct diagnosis, pneumonia. Besides, we calculated the average CPU time per inquiry with various speedup settings using an NVIDIA GPU. Obviously, without our speedup techniques, the education reward estimation process, which equals to the setting BISODA without approximation and filtering speedup techniques, is impracticable for an online service with 32 seconds per inquiry. In summary, BISODA is a novel non-RL bipartite framework for online disease diagnosis that is computationally efficient and scalable to large feature spaces. And it's the first work that proposed to test the transferability of symptom tracking methods from knowledge-based simulated environments to real-world data. In our future study, we will try to leverage medical knowledge explicitly during inquiry to make decisions like real doctors and we will make more evaluations about comorbidity. That is a patient having two or more disease, which is common in the real world. That's all, thank you for listening. If there are any questions, you can contact me at this email address. Thanks.